Hello friends, I'm Pixie Sticks, and today I would like to show you my new method for creating sticker sheets with the Cricut machine. About a year and a half ago, I put out a tutorial for creating sticker sheets with the Cricut, and it is now one of the most viewed videos on my channel, so I'm so glad many of you found it helpful. However, since I made that video, I've learned lots of new things, and I actually have a new method now to create my sticker sheets, and it has made my sticker creation process with the Cricut so much less stressful and so much more enjoyable. So I really wanted to share that with you today. Let's jump right into it. So for this process, you're going to need two PNG files to upload into Cricut Design Space. The first one will be the cut lines for your stickers themselves, and the second file will be the background that it's gonna print behind your stickers. I'll be using Photoshop for this demonstration, but you can use any similar software that has the same kinds of tools available. So first things first, we're going to set up our file. This part is pretty similar to the way I used to do it, but I've changed things slightly, so I'm going to go over it real quick with you. The first step is to set the file size, and I always do it by inches because that's the measurements I use, so my sticker sheets are all 4 by 6 so 4 inches wide, 6 inches high, and make sure the resolution is set to 300 pixels because that's best for printing then hit the create button and the first thing I usually do is import the backing of my sticker sheet which in my case I already have set up so I'm gonna pull that in now okay now that I have my backing I'm gonna pull in the sticker parts and I have these all as separate PNG files so I'm just gonna select them all using control click and hit open And if I drag it down like this and have my tool set to the move tool, I can just grab the PNG file and place it over here. I drew the original image much, much larger than it needed to be. <laughs> so in order to make it the correct size, the first thing I'm gonna do is convert this layer to a smart object. Not all programs have that ability and that's fine. But what this does is it makes it so even if I make this too small and want to make it bigger again, it's not going to change the quality of the image at all. So I know I want it about this size. We're going to do the same thing with our next one. You can close the original once you've moved it over because we don't need it anymore. Convert it to Smart Object. Control T to quickly get to the Transform tool. and put it where you want it. I'm gonna do the same with the rest of these and then I will be back to talk about the next step. Okay, now I have all my stickers placed about where I want them. I have grouped all of these separate layers into a group so it's just easier to turn them on and off and that'll be important later. So I highly recommend putting your backing in one group and your stickers in another group. The next thing we're going to do is put a stroke around our stickers and this is going to be the actual cut line that the Cricut will cut. So in order to do that, open your stickers group, go to the first one, hit the little FX button down here at the bottom and go to stroke. And we want to set the color to white in this case because I'm going to want a white border around the stickers. And we're going to set it to 15 pixels because I know that's about the right size for how much border I want on my stickers. I'm going to change the blend mode to normal because I just want it to be normal white with no blend mode with the opacity set to 100% so it's just plain white. All right, now that I know that's what I want, I'm going to go ahead and hold down my Alt key and drag this effects to the next layer. And as you can see, it puts the exact same stroke around the next sticker. So I'm going to do that for the rest of them here. Okay, now the cut lines are all set. However, the Cricut doesn't always cut exactly on this line when you move to the cutting part of the process. So I like to add an extra white border so that the Cricut has some room to breathe in between the cut line and the yellow of the background because we don't want any of the background to be on the stickers when you peel them off. So in order to do that, 
I'm going to start with this first one, hold down my control key, it would be command on a Mac, and click the little thumbnail here, and that selects this sticker. However, you can see it only selects the actual artwork and not the stroke part, so we're going to have to adjust for that when we create the border, and I'll show you how to do that. And now to select the rest of them, you hold down shift control and click on each one in turn. Now you can see I have them all selected. I'm just going to close up my group so it's easier to see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is open up my backing group and create a new layer anywhere in there because this border is going to end up as part of your backing. So then we go to select, modify, expand, and I'm going to expand it by 10 pixels plus whatever we used for the original stroke around each sticker, which was 15. So that'll go up to 25. And what that's going to do is create a border that's bigger than the cut line and allows for some wiggle room. Now that we have that selection and we're on this new layer we created in the backing, we're going to go to the paint bucket tool and fill this with white. And now we have our border. And you can see that if I turn off the backing, we're just left with our stickers that have the stroke around them. And that's what's going to end up being the cut lines. Okay, before we export our files, there's one more important thing that we need to do to make sure that everything comes out the right size when we get into design space. We add a new layer above our sticker group and we grab our pencil tool and I go down to one pixel. And then you zoom in really far. I'm actually going to use the zoom tool because it'll be easier. I'm just going to select this little part here. And right now I'm going to make this black so we can easily see what I'm doing. But basically I just make a little three pixel triangle in the corner on the top left. And then we're going to move down to the bottom right and do the same thing. And we're going to add a color overlay on top of this and make it white because we don't want to see it on the print. Okay, so now if you turn that off, you can make sure that you've got your little marks there and easily see them. But whenever you turn it on, it will not print out on your artwork. Okay, now that we have our corners is what I call them it's time to export our files that we'll be importing into Design Space. We're going to end up needing two separate files, one for the background and one for the sticker cut lines. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the background. When we export this, we don't need the corners turned on because it's automatically going to be the right size. And the reason that is, is because we have at least something touching each edge which is going to set the size correctly. If we didn't have the corners on the sticker part, you can see that there's not something touching each edge, so we wouldn't be able to set it to 4x6 without it using the sides of the stickers instead of the size of the 4x6 file that we've made. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and export the backing, and we're going to save it as a PNG. So we're going to do that. And then for the sticker cut lines, we turn on the stickers group and also make sure and turn on that corners group. Then we go save it as PNG. Okay, now we have both the files we need to start working in Design Space. Once we have our files all set up, it's time to go into the Cricut Design Space. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and then go to Upload so that we can get our designs uploaded. Click on the button that says Upload Image and you can either drag and drop your files right in there or click the button to browse, which is what I prefer doing. You do have to do one file at a time, it won't let you upload multiple. But once you've got it in there, make sure and click that it's complex. Check to make sure there's no extra stray marks that you don't want as cut lines. And set it as a print then cut image. 
Follow the same steps to upload the second part of your design, the background in this case. And then select both the background and the sticker cut file and insert them into your project. They'll come in much larger than the size that you created them. So the first thing to do is select one of them, go up to size at the top and just put in the correct width and the height should adjust itself. In my case, these are four by six. So I just enter the width of four and it automatically adjusts it to six inches high. Then I rotate it 90 degrees so that I can fit two side by side on one sheet of paper. And then for the first sheet, you're gonna set the position to zero, zero. And that's for both the cut lines of the stickers and the background. You might have to adjust the layers so that the sticker cut is above the background and you just can drag layers around here on the layers panel on the right. Next, we're gonna create the second sticker sheet. So select both layers and hit duplicate. And then set the position for this sticker sheet to zero by 4.25, if you're working with a four by six sticker sheet, just so that they're lined up next to each other, but there's a bit of space in between. Incidentally, lately my Cricut Design Space has not been letting me set the X position to zero. I don't know why that is. It automatically changes it to 0.028. It's random, but it still works fine as long as all of the X positions are set to 0.028. We'll end up needing a second copy of all four of these layers. So go ahead and select them all and then hit duplicate. We don't need them quite yet though. So I go ahead and hide them by clicking on this little eye icon. Now I'm just gonna make sure that the layers are in the correct order with the sticker cut layers on top of the background layers. Select all four of the ones that are showing and hit attach so that these become their own group. And then I'm gonna close that up and go ahead and hide that from view also so that I can work on the other four layers we've got set up here. Once again, I'm arranging the layers in the correct order with the two like layers next to each other. And since these were copied layers, they kind of got shifted from the zero position. So we're gonna reset that to zero, zero for both the sticker cut layer and the background layer of the first sheet. And then we'll also set the second sheet to zero by 4.25 for its X and Y position. And as I was looking back through here, I noticed that some of these actually got set to zero. So I had to manually set them to 0 0.028 because the other ones wouldn't set to zero. So it's a little quirky, <laughs> but now they're finally all lined up properly and we're gonna go ahead and set them up for use. So we're gonna attach the two sticker cut layers together and the two background layers together as separate attachments. And here I'm just arranging the layers so that the sticker cut section is above the background section. And now if I turn all three attachment folders off, you'll see that nothing shows up. And any layers that you have turned off when you go to make the project won't affect the outcome of the project. It's like they're not even there at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then we'll move to the next step, which is the printing section of the process. So I'm gonna click on the make it button. The only thing I have visible is the four layers that are all under one attachment folder that includes both the backs and the fronts of the sticker sheets. And that is the folder that gets sent to your printer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and print out some of these sticker sheets. When I'm printing sheets, I always make sure the add bleed is turned on because it tends to help leave a border around the outside of the sheet itself when we're cutting that part out. So make sure that is checked and print those out. I use the brand Photo Paper Direct for all my sticker paper and I prefer glossy. So I use their gloss vinyl. And my printer is the Canon Pixma Pro 100 inkjet printer. 
And here's the first trick I'm going to show you today. We're going to go to cancel and cancel the cut because we don't want to cut all of those layers together. I noticed that for some reason my Cricut tends to cut die cut stickers more accurately than it did my sticker sheets. So I kind of ran with that and came up with this new cutting method that I'm sharing with you today. So for this next part, we're going to make sure that only the sticker cut layers are showing. So that's that attachment that just had the two sticker cut layers in it. And we're going to go ahead and make that. And instead of saying send to printer, since we've already printed, we're just going to click I've already printed. <laughs> and here's where my next tip comes in, and that's your material settings. On the Design Space homepage, if you click these three little dashes up here in the left hand corner and go down to Manage Custom Materials, you can put in custom settings for each different material you use with your Cricut and that way you can set the blade to cut deeper or less deep based on the thickness of your sticker paper for instance. As for which settings you should use for your particular sticker paper, it might take you a bit of trial and error to figure out what works best, or you could possibly search Google for someone who uses the same sticker paper as you do and see if they've mentioned what their settings are for that custom material. That's where I found the settings I'm using for my Photo Paper Direct paper. So to make a new custom material, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list of materials and click add new material. Give it a name. You'll need a custom material setting both for kiss cut stickers and for die cut stickers. So for kiss cut with my particular paper, I set it to 180 for the pressure and I leave the rest of the settings alone. And then for the die cut setting, I put that at 265 pressure and then you want to change the amount of times that it cuts to times two so it goes around twice and that's what makes it cut all the way through the thick PPD gloss paper because it is pretty thick vinyl paper. On your Cricut machine, set the dial to custom and then once you go to print your project, click on this browse all materials link and you'll be able to go through this whole list and find the custom material settings that you just set up. For some reason they are blank <laughs> in my design space um, but they're still there they just don't show up with their titles. I'm not sure why. So I just have to guess until I get the one that says kiss cut and that's the setting I need to use. Now it's time to load your pre-printed sticker sheets onto the cut mat. Try to get it as even as you can. And make sure it's stuck down pretty well so it doesn't try to lift up once you're cutting. And then align the mat with either the left side or the right side of the little guide posts there. You can do either one, just make sure it's the same each time. Keep gentle pressure on the back of the mat as you push the feed button so that it goes in evenly. And we should be ready to start cutting. The machine sometimes has trouble reading the registration marks with glossy paper. I found something that helps is to keep the top of the machine closed and also hold another piece of paper over the top of it as it's setting up its registration. The darkness somehow helps it to register those marks. And then once it starts cutting, you can go ahead and remove that piece of paper because it's done all its scanning and now it's ready to cut. So it's just gonna cut the sticker parts and then we're gonna do the background separately. After the Kiss Cut has finished, we're gonna go back into Design Space, turn off the layer of the Kiss Cut stickers and turn on the layer that holds the background and we'll go to make it again and click I've already printed and then browse your materials again and find your die cut setting which I think is this one <laughs> yes okay so make sure it's set to your die cut setting and then go ahead and feed your mat back into the device again 
and follow the same steps with covering the registration marks like we did before so that it can cut the outside of the sticker sheet and this should be a die cut so it should go around each outside twice because that's how we set up our settings and it should completely cut out the sheet incidentally this is a new mat i'm using so it's very sticky and some of the back of the paper is sticking to it so you just have to be extra careful when you're taking the sheets off to make sure that the backs of them don't rip and stay onto the mat while you're taking them off it's always better to bend the mat rather than bending your sticker paper so i tend to kind of bend mine in half gently and then apply very gentle but very steady pressure on the sticker sheet to get it to release from the background and not curl up. And with that, you should have two beautiful sticker sheets. As I mentioned before, the Cricut machine tends to cut more evenly and correctly when I have it set to the die cut setting or when I'm doing each part one at a time. So as you can maybe see here, or maybe not, it's cut very evenly around the stickers, which is one of the biggest advantages to this process. That's not to say it always cuts perfectly, I just get a lot better ratio of usable sticker sheets to non-usable sticker sheets than I used to. This method does have the disadvantage that every time you want to print and cut a new sticker sheet, you do have to go through several steps just to cut out one sheet of two sticker sheets. You have to kind of go back and forth between cutting the sticker part and the outside part. But there is a tip I can give you to make it a bit more efficient, and that is if you have more than one mat, you can set up kind of an assembly line where you do all of the sticker cuts first, and then you change the settings in Design Space and do all of the outside die cuts. And this let me get through cutting several sticker sheets in a very short amount of time with minimal losses, which I appreciated. So guys, that's my entire process start to finish. I hope this helps you in your sticker creating journey. And if it did, I'd love for you to leave a like and maybe comment and let others know if you have any tips and tricks. Thank you for spending some of your time with me today. I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.